Leaders in the artificial intelligence race, such as Alphabet, Meta, and Microsoft, they're expected to announce quarterly results this week, and investors are eager to hear their plans and how they're going to incorporate artificial intelligence tools, as recession fears are causing some execs to focus on productivity. Here to discuss what Wall Street is expecting to hear about AI in the workplace is Prion founder and CEO Igor Yablokov. Prion provides augmented intelligence for companies to use internally, and Yablokov's former company, Yap, was sold to Amazon and its techne technology formed the basis for Alexa. All of that considered, sir, what do you expect to hear when these companies report earnings and also give some type of nod to their own artificial intelligence ambitions? I think we're still early to see any sort of uh, pr productivity output. Obviously, from their perspective, their job is to provide the picks and axes, especially for these enterprises, and buttress their existing um, product lines and, and revenue lines. It seems like, Igor, a lot of the excitement around the latest wave of generative AI has been consumer facing, right? Because the public got a hold of ChatGPT, people played with it, they were very excited about it. Um, you focus on it more for enterprise. Do you think, you know, while ChatGPT, again, is, is sort of public facing, if you will, have the companies that have put forth these AI solutions also been working on the back end with companies to sort of offer products on that end? And, and when's that going to move the needle? I think in some cases, you're exactly right. They've been taken by surprise in some ways. Most of these experiences do get born in, in consumer incarnations. If you actually go to the primordial ooze of artificial intelligence, many of these incarnations actually started by trying to support things like accessibility, um, you know, to put them inside of vehicles, right, so that we don't text while driving, so to impart more safety. And then they mutate into these consumer experiences that all of us know as Alexa, Siri, and, and these style of things. And once the, the consumer tech companies de-risk something as an interaction method, then you know do we start seeing all of the uh, capabilities getting added so that it can go into more uh, robust environments uh, such as enterprises. Igor, so much of the focus for what has existed within search for decades now is the ability to optimize for search engines and and by that you know even on kind of press or media or any type of website that gets put together there is search engine optimization in order to have your own result ranked higher as you start to think about the future of search search and generative ai and how that is going to pull in data as well how can and have we heard anything from how these companies are going to make sure that we are protected from either bias or just some type of optimization serving up an answer that may not be correct? That's a great question. I mean, obviously, uh, as as they're trying to support ad space businesses, one of the things that you have with with a search index is rankings and, and people are paying to uh, show up on top. Uh, or as you rightfully said, they're trying to optimize their web experiences in order to hit the mark on the on the search terms that are that are being looked at. I think with these large language models uh, that are that are at the core of these new experiences, it's still unknown in terms of how SEO is going to be uh, working in them if they are able to change any any of these outcomes as well. Because remember, these are black boxes, and even big tech uh, folks don't know exactly how these things work yet. And so there's going to, going to be a period of time uh, to essentially stress test these, these models, ensure that there's no toxic uh, content in them to see whether they align with existing product lines or whether they just cannibalize and, and uh, they have to drive new experiences. So that's talking about some of the potential risks inherent in this new technology. Let's talk a little bit more about opportunities. I, I was intrigued by this new report of a study out from Stanford and MIT that talked about an uptick in productivity among workers using AI, particularly lower skilled workers or even lower performing workers who were using AI. As somebody who was involved um, in the sort of precursor to an Alexa, what do you think is the next big move here? What do you think is the big opportunity with this current crop of technology? And that's why we always talk about it as augmented intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think there's not, you know, there's not any strata of job that that this isn't going to be affect in, in corporate America. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. But you're going to see new platforms that are purpose built to task because the expectations for enterprise environments, especially if they're highly regulated, 
are different levels of accuracy, scale, you know, security and speed, right? In terms of how fast they react uh, to markets. Um, and so you're gonna see a lot of that uh, want to be more under control of the enterprises themselves, because once they depart their website, where it's simple things like support and help desk style operations, they're gonna get closer to their core IP, intellectual property in terms of what, you know, what defines who they are uh, as organizations. And I'm not sure how much of those heuristics they're going to want big tech folks to grab uh, as they figure out their own expansion uh, opportunities. You know, it's really interesting that you mentioned augmented intelligence instead of artificial intelligence. The first time I had heard that was a couple of weeks back in one of our conversations with, and, and full name drop, I suppose, uh, chess master, grand chess master, uh, Gary Kasparov, who had mentioned that's how we should be thinking about this going forward. When you think about as well, what the Delta would look like for a lot of the companies that are saying they're rolling out some type of generative AI component into their business as a pick and axe, as you mentioned earlier, what type of material value would that add from what we can calculate at this point to these businesses? I mean, we have a relatively large client that's about to adopt this um, in the energy space, and they're foreseeing that they can reduce the downtime of power plants by half by adopting these style of technologies. So it's fairly material. We're not talking about single digit improvements in, in productivity. We're talking about sea changes of productivity that, are, that we're on the cusp of. All right, very interesting stuff as we continue to talk about all this. Igor, thank you for your time. Igor Yabuklov is Prion founder and CEO. Appreciate it.